Hi, it's Brittany and I'm back today with a tutorial. To, we're going to be making a necklace and some earrings and um, both items are going to feature these Big Dreams 18 millimeter Heishi beads or Heishi beads made out of polymer, um, polymer clay vinyl. So I'm super excited. I just love how colorful they are. They're enormous. I want, I just want like a whole bracelet with these <laughs> but um i think we're gonna make a necklace um and earrings and i'm not going to keep them in the color um order that they're in at the moment although i really really do love the the random color story that's going on i think this 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 um, mix is called color party but i could be wrong um but i think i'm gonna sort out some of the colors and uh use them in conjunction with some other really fantastic Jesse James beads. So stay tuned and I'll be right back. Okay, I've sorted out um, the Heishi beads into their little color groups. And the first item that I'm going to make, which is the necklace, is going to focus on some of these green discs. Um, I need about, mm, probably about 10. But uh, one of my major things that I love doing is altering beads. So we're going to change these a little bit. And to do that, you might need like an an awl or um, a bead reamer. You can use a, a hand drill, um, a regular household drill. I'm going to use my Dremel, um, but I'm going to take probably about 10 of these. And we want to make sure that the front facing piece uh, looks pretty nice. So I'm just going to do that really quickly. Um, this one we would probably want to use in a different design just because it has a little bit of um, air bubbles on it but most of these are looking pretty great. Okay, so there's 10. And um, I use like a, a small wood cutting board that I got from the Dollar Tree to drill on, but I also put another one underneath it because I always end up going through um, my, my wood cutting board. And then I just put it in another tray from the Dollar Tree. So you can see that I use this a lot. I love polymer clay, I drill a lot. So, um, but this is super easy and I'm going to tell you, you don't need a drill for this. Um, I have this um, uh, bead reamer from Beadalon and this will work to put a hole into it too. You can, like I said, use a needle, you can use something sharp that can poke a hole through this. It's, it's very malleable. You'll be able to poke a hole pretty easily. So I have my Dremel, okay? And I'm going to drill two holes on either side of the bead. So I'm gonna put one right there and it takes, it's so quick. And then I'll turn it on and turn it off and then I'll just do one right on the other side of the bead too. And just doing that opens this bead up to several other options. Now it's a connector. Um, I, you don't have to drill your bead. You can wire wrap it. So um, if, if that's what you'd like. I would say use a mask or um, do this in a very well ventilated area. I tend to drill um, polymer clay outside most of the time, but this is really, especially if I'm sanding it, but this is a really small amount of drilling that I'm going to do. So I'm not worried about it, but especially if you have like sensitivities um, or asthma or something like that, I would definitely say use a mask. Okay, so now I've drilled all of my pieces and I am going to quickly connect them with some jump rings. So really quickly, and I do mean quickly, they, this, this goes really fast. See, and then they're connected like that. with all the um, colors that come on one, just one strand of these um, Big Dream beads, um, you, the possibilities are endless because I sorted about half of the beads and there's still this really long bit left. So, and, and you could probably get, I, I would say 10 projects out at least out of one strand of these today we are going to make three projects well three pieces of jewelry and we're not even using close to half a strand so 
It's really exciting. I'm excited that I have more left and you will for sure be seeing me use these on my channel soon because I have another project in mind with them. Okay, so we have our strand of connected discs and you know what, I think I want a few more so I'm going to go ahead and drill some more and add them on. Okay, I ended up linking 13 um, discs and it gave me the length that I wanted. I'm going to set that to the side, well, actually I'm just gonna move it down a little bit for a moment. Next we're gonna work on our inside strand. This is the outside strand of the necklace and then we're gonna work on an inside strand. And um, with that inside strand, I am using the Color Trends Bead Mix in Rainforest. It's absolutely gorgeous. Lovely greens that go really well with this chartreuse lime color. Um, and then I'm just gonna kinda pick out some beads that I really like. Um, that I think go well. So I like the, this sparkly glitter bead. Um, I like these stone beads. These, they're dyed, I think they're sesame jasper, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, I like these bicones, a um, couple of these crystals, um, some other crystal rondelles, and um, some of these flat ovals. So what I'm going to do is just grab some, you can either grab wire or you can take um, some head, or I'm sorry, eye pins and I'm going to hand link them together. You could also string them if you wanted. I, I'm kind of going to go along with the, the linking look because of the jump rings we used here. So I'm just going to lay out my pattern. not really thinking too hard about it. And, um, oh, I want to use some of these. Okay, and then I'm just going to link those together with simple loops using some eye pins. just like that and I am I always try and use as much of the eye pin as I can so instead of just grabbing a new eye pin I am going to make a link out of the rest of the old eye pin trim that down a little bit Okay, I'm gonna go through and do the rest. Now I'm going to link these together once I get them. Uh, all the links made, I'll uh, carefully open up one side 
of each link, put them together, and then close it back up. You wanna make sure that you twist those open. If you pull them, they'll distort and you're not gonna have a nice necklace. Okay, so we have our linked piece and, well, our two linked pieces, I should say, but one has um, glass and stone beads and one has the polymer clay beads. Um, they're close to, if not the exact same length and normally, oh, they are almost exactly the same length. The, the lighter green um, strand is a little bit longer. Normally we'd want that one to be probably one to two inches longer, but um, we're not gonna, we don't need that today. Okay, so I have some green metallic leather um, uh, from Jesse James Beads, and I'm gonna cut two 13 inch pieces. There's one. And here's another. And I'm going to keep out the rest of my, my leather because we're going to use it again in just a moment. Okay, so I am going to take one piece and I'm going to thread it through one side of one of my discs. And then I am going to come around and just do an overhand knot with both pieces. And we'll just pull that through. And I think this is one millimeter leather. I'm sorry I didn't mention that before. And I am just going to bring that down. So that's secure. As long as your hole is, you know, a couple millimeters in, I'm not worried about that ripping. It's very lightweight, okay? Um, I will secure this knot with a dot of glue and then I will um, trim that in just a moment. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I'll just pull that tight. There we go. I want to walk that down a little bit more towards my bead. So, because this side had less of a gap. Okay. We'll tighten that. I'm going to grab some glue. I'm using GS Hypo Cement. However, you can use, you know, Quick Grip, um, E6000, or Super New Glue. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right around that knot. And I'm going to set that aside and let it dry while I work on the second piece. Okay, we're gonna do something very similar to this piece. However, we want the, the leather to be a little bit shorter. I'm just gonna do um, 11 inches, well, 11 and a half inches on this one, and then I can always trim it to be to where I want it to be in the back before we put our clasp on. So I'm trimming to 11 inches. There we go. And um, you can use a jump ring here. Um, you can wire wrap this so it's a little bit more secure. I'm just gonna secure right onto there just like we did with the other strand.
create a knot. Um, you can also use ribbon clamps, um, uh, cord ends, whatever you have on hand if you don't want to do a knot. Whatever works for you. Make it your piece. So we'll get that knot going. Here we go, just like that, and that'll smooth out. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side. There we go. Okay, we're gonna dab some glue on those knots. And then I'm gonna come back and trim this one. Make sure you only cut the tail and not your main cord. I'm gonna let that one dry a little bit. Okay, I've trimmed both pieces of leather and I'm just making sure nothing is tangled. I'm gonna take the other side and I'm gonna grab a little clamp. It's like a little piece that can clamp closed around cord and I'm just going to make sure that my beaded side well the be the glass beads are on the inside and the heishi beads are on the outside and then I am just going to put these in my cord holder um, all right, I'm going to turn that around a little bit. Make those even. So we'll put those in there and I'm just going to hold my thumbnail right towards the bottom of the um, crimp and my pointer behind the crimp. And I am going to take my pliers and squish one side to the best of my ability. Uh, we don't want both sides to be squished at the same time. So I'm going to try and get in there and get the one down like that and smush as cleanly as possible. And then we'll do the other side. There we go. So I've already done the other side and our necklace looks like this. It's a pretty long necklace, but I just love like how free spirited it is. Now, if you want, you could add, since this is only one millimeter um, leather, you could add um, some beads to it. You can knot it, whatever you'd like to do. Um, and then let's see, we can find the middle piece. And you can also drill another hole or wire wrap into the middle hole and hang a pendant if that's what you'd like. So I actually have some beads. I actually think I'm going to do a pendant. Um, so I have these um, from the uh, Rainforest Mix. Aren't those pretty? The crystal spacer and another crystal. And I am just going to do a simple loop just like that I'm gonna open that simple loop 
and I'm gonna hook on our Monstera charm this would also be a super cute piece uh, pair of earrings if you just wanted to make them into earrings it would look great like that wouldn't they and then I am going to find my middle one So here's my middle one and I'm going to drill one little hole right in the middle of that one and I'll do it with my um, bead reamer so you can see how easy it is. So I'm just going to stick a stick the point in and do a little bit of wiggling and then so we have the little hole started and you can make that bigger with a needle, um, anything. And with bead reamers, you usually want to use um, water, but this is polymer clay. You don't need to use water. You could. And it's really to keep the dust down and keep the heat down with the bead reamer. Okay, so now we have the hole. I am going to grab a little bit larger jump ring than the ones we've been using for the rest of this necklace. Open that up our charm get our jump ring through our bead And I would say we have an almost completed necklace. We have to um, put our clasp on. But it's super cute. Isn't that cute? I love it. And you, can, you don't need to do two strands if you don't want, but I liked how it looked. And then I'm just going to grab a clasp and a couple jump rings. And we're going to call this finished, and then we'll move on to our earrings. And there we go. My mission for this necklace was to get you to think outside the box for Hishi beads. Um, I tend to do that. I try to do that sometimes. <laughs> so take this and run with it. Make it make it your own. I would say take some paint pens, put some polka dots or stripes or triangles or something on them. Uh, the sky is definitely the limit. Maybe make holes offset so it look so it's not so uniform. Um, here is our really cute necklace. I love monsteras. I love green looks so fantastic and I just love all the different colors it's a nice monochromatic piece um, I'll include a little bit better pictures at the end okay so there's our necklace and I am going to move on to a pair of earrings so I'm gonna do the exact same thing with um, three of these beads um, I I'm only going to drill two holes in these two and then this one's going to be at the bottom so we're only going to drill one hole in that one. So we'll come back to our cutting board. Very fast, very easy. You just wipe off our pieces. You can rinse them off, you can dry them off, whatever you want to do. Um, and then I am going to grab two 
two jump rings out of here. And connect those together. And then um, I also used some beads, or I also want to use some beads out of the Illuminating Color Trends um, pack, which had these really pretty yellows. And the beads that I'm using out of there are these awesome, like, sheriff stars. I always, that's what I always call them. Now for this earring, I am going to use some E6000. I have like a little recycled applesauce cup and I'm gonna pour some in there. Just, you don't really even need that much, but just enough for you to man manipulate. And I just picked up a toothpick. And very carefully, we're just going to put just a tiny bit of the adhesive on the front of our bead. And even that's probably a little bit too much. And then I am going to try and keep it as flat as possible so they don't move around. Push my Sheriff Star spacer right on top. Isn't that cool? It's like a really fun mod earring. I feel like these discs are modern anyway, but this just kind of just makes it fun. Cute little dangle. And then we'll do the last one. You could probably use even less than I used. Okay, so we have our three, our six beads turned into three beads, and um, I'm going to take a little bit smaller. Um, jump ring. And I'm not waiting until they're dry, <laughs> but you probably want to do that so they don't jostle and move around. And there we have our fast, cute little pair of earrings. Isn't that adorable? And here's the second one. Isn't that so fun? I love those colors together. They're so summery. I love turquoise green and like electric blue. So cool. All right. So there's our first pair of earrings. And then the second one, I am going to do... The same thing that we just did with this earring, but we're gonna make it a little different. So I'm gonna take an orange, I'm gonna take a hot pink, and um, one of the purples. There we go. We're gonna make our holes again. The hot pink one's gonna be at the bottom. So I'm only gonna do one hole in that one. And you can line them up if you want to do two at a time, that's totally fine. So there we go. There we go. And we'll just kind of shake those off. 
I have um, the mint chocolate chip mix in uh, the ice cream mixes from Jesse James Beads. Um, and I'm gonna look for these little green flowers. So I need six. Um, I think there's, I think there's four. Nope, there should be six actually. So one, two, I have one here, three, four, Six. I'm gonna put those back in there. I'm gonna take a head pin, put it through one of our beads, put it through our Hishi bead, and then I am going to make a simple loop on the back. You can do a wrap loop, whatever you want. And then we're just gonna make sure that it's tight enough to where it doesn't move. It's gonna move no matter what, but that it doesn't come loose. Sorry, not in camera there. And that it doesn't move as much as possible. So isn't that super cute? You can do this with sequins, you could do it with marguerites, any kind of bead that you want to use. We're just decorating it a little bit more. I just think it's so sweet, that little aqua drop. So I'm gonna do that for all of my beads. Just adorable. careful that you don't make your loop too small that it's going through that bead. Isn't that fun? Oh my gosh, so cute. Wouldn't this look cute on a bracelet? <gasps> I love it. This, um, this technique would be super sweet on a bracelet. Okay, and then I will connect these with my jump ring. Isn't that so sweet? Okay, there we have our earring and then we're just gonna attach it to an earring wire. So I'm gonna put one jump ring on the top. And then another jump ring that's a little smaller and my ear wire. And there's earring number two. Now I actually don't know which one I like more. I really like both of these. <gasps> these are so cute. Oh my gosh. There aren't the possibilities completely endless with these. And here is the pair. Super cute. So whimsical, so sweet, so bright. These are fantastic. Look at that AB against those really bright colors. I love them. And I gotta tell you, we still have so, so, so many of these beads left. So I have this many on the strand, but I have all of those over there. So um, yeah, I could easily get another 10 to 15 different projects out of these just because they're so cool and versatile. So um, thank you so much to Jesse James Beads for having me back. Um, I will include some pictures of everything at the end. And um, please visit me on turquoise.street on YouTube and you'll probably see these beads in the future because um, I have a couple more ideas. So thanks for watching. Everybody have a fantastic rest of their day. Bye-bye.